We're here with Noah Lyles uh, in Boston. What's up? <laughs> um, last race you had was against Michael Norman in Rome. Yep, yep. You know, one of the races of the season on Diamond League circuit. How did it feel to finally not finish first in a Diamond League 200? I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. It doesn't feel great, but it's just like something you've gotten used to. I mean, as a pro, I feel that you have to be able to handle losses and wins. And I knew that I wasn't going to win forever. You know, that's something you just know. And if you if you think that you're going to win forever, then you might not be human. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's just something to always be prepared for because I knew the day that I got beat was the day I'd get more excited about going back to training and really hitting it home. And is that how it felt when you got back to training off the run? That's exactly how it felt. Like, I was, me and my coach were talking, and he was like, first of all, we thought it was a great race. You know, 1972 was like, I'm right back where I started mm -hmm. at the end of last season. So it was really good to see that we were really close to where we even began and we're always starting the season. And we pushed our season way further back than, you know, last year. Mm -hmm. So it's like all good signs. And then it was just like, well, now we just got to clean some stuff up. And then a bomb drop. <laughs> All right. Um, and before that, I mean, you raced Christian in Shanghai yeah. and got the win there. And, you know, that obviously was an exciting race, but yeah. there was also some fireworks on social media afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, did you go into that race knowing that Christian didn't really like you? Or did you be surprised by what came out of that? No. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, mean, I you know, you just, I don't know. You know, some people just don't like you. You, know, you can't do nothing about it, you know. I can't do nothing about it. It just how, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, did you think he would... He, I mean, he didn't call you out by name, but it was pretty much, like, on social media. Were you surprised that he would come out and say something like that? I was, I was more surprised that he tweeted, because he doesn't tweet a lot. I'm not surprised that he said it. I'm just more surprised that he actually tweeted. <laughs> yeah. And when you first see that tweet pop up on your timeline, what are you thinking? Oh, you know... That's good. I would, I would go. Who you at, in bro? <laughs> but no, he probably would have got more mad. I mean, I, it doesn't matter what he says. You know, all I know is what I'm doing is what I'm doing, and I know me and my coach got a game plan, and it's working out really well. Yeah, I mean, I saw your interview with Nick Sicardi though. You said like, you know, it's kind of a good thing that you have these rivals. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you feel it's important that you guys are two of the top hundred meter sprinters in the world? Is it important that? there is some enmity or there's a little you know there's some rivalry that track can sort of hang its hat on I think there's always room for rivalries you know it really gets it gets both parties going it gets them more work wanting to work harder to obtain a bigger goal uh, even with my rivalry with Mike you know everybody is like I, I got more people messaging me that that was the greatest race they've seen in like a long time rather than oh you know you, you're not winning anymore which was actually very satisfying to see that because every time I get on the track, I want to give people a show. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that people are starting to enjoy the sport, and I've seen tons of tweets out there. It's like, oh, 2019, 2020 going to be, like, major for track and field. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah. Is it, is it strange to you, you, know, you drop down to 100 and beat Christian, that's sort of viewed as his specialty distance. You're, yeah. like, viewed as a 200 guy. Yeah. Then Michael, who's viewed as a 400 guy, drops down to the 200 yeah. and beats you. I mean, is, is that kind of funny yeah. to think about? Yeah, it was kind of ironic. I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, you know, it's like, well, I'm not going to let that happen again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and then the question, I know you've probably been asked about this a million times, but i got to ask about it. So you're still only doing the 200 yeah. at USA's, and I saw what you said to Nick was um, you wouldn't just add the 100 in until you're confident you could sort of make it through all three rounds and win both. Exactly. What, what would that take? Like, what would you have to do to prove to yourself that you are ready to take on both of the championships? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'd have to drop a bomb. <laughs> like, uh... Like, a, if I ran, like, 9.75 or something like that, okay. then I would be like, oh, me, it would be time for me and my coach to say, all right, mm, are we going to change the plan up or are we going to keep it how it is? Right. It, but it would have to be something in the 100. Like, if, if, say you ran, like, 19.4 in the 200, would you say yeah, I need to? The 200 is, like, there's nothing in the 200 that would solidify me. It would be things that I do in the 100 yeah. that would be the game changer going forward. And so are we going to see you dropping bombs this year, or is that going to have to wait until 2020, 2021? Oh, man, I guess you got to pay attention. <laughs> I guess you got to watch the track meet. All right. Very good. No Lyle's being the showman for the sport of track and field. Appreciate it. No uh, problem. Good luck on this one.